G'day and welcome back to part two of the Foxtech Lightning 210 FPV drone racing review and here it is, I've flown it and it, as expected it flies really well, it was a bit loose because the flight controller is just running on default PIDs, needs a bit of tuning but hey, um, you know, not much to complain about, it's pretty quick, it's got plenty of power, really has a good bit of punch out, the, H, well, the high voltage LiPo probably helped a little bit there but I did fly it with a standard LiPo pack and uh, a 1300, uh, what is it? Uh, graphene pack gives about the same performance as this 1500 high voltage pack so you know it's your choice as to what you use and it you know, flew really well now I didn't have I don't have any high definition footage because uh, the Mobius platform a bit of a problem with that obviously you've got to put an angle on it there's no facility to put angle on there and if you look carefully the Mobius actually obscures a great deal of the field of view of the flight camera so that's a bit annoying I found a bit annoying too that you get these posts in the view, in the picture in the top left or top right and top right top left of the video these posts are quite visible which is a little bit well you get used to it but it would be nice if that didn't happen I know that on the Bolt 210 for example it's even narrower at the front but you don't get the posts in the in the field of view so yeah that's about it um, I did change the setup with the flight controller because that was pretty much essential let me just take the battery off and the battery and look here I've got a battery strap right round the frame and those pins from the Naze 32 controller used to come out the side there if you look at the first video you'll see there were pins hanging out the side I actually jabbed my finger on it I noticed another review did exactly the same thing so I unsoldered those pins and I just ran a three wire fly lead off to a CPPM capable receiver the D4R2 which I velcroed to the bottom of this top frame that seemed to work really well but obviously if you'd left those pins on there you couldn't use a battery strap right round the whole frame now there are some holes in the frame for a battery strap to go through but the straps that Foxtech provided are way too long and if you do that then they simply they don't mate up and you can't use them so you'd have to get a shorter battery strap if you wanted to use their holes through the frame there but I just used a big one ran it right round and that's one of the Foxtech ones worked fine it's got a kind of a vinyl -y inside so it grips the battery quite well note I also put some foam rubber on these plates because there are some screws here these panhead screws uh, here basically they would poke into your battery if you didn't have some rubber to protect it and the rubber also stops the battery from sliding around once you've got the strap on so that's pretty important stuff now um, I, as I say D4R2 receiver in the back and FPV receiver uh, transmitter well there wasn't really enough room to put one in there and still be able to access the channel changing controls in the channel display so I put it on the bottom that's where I put it so this gives me great access to the display that well the little LEDs that show me what channel I'm on and the little switch for changing channels which is quite handy because as you'll see in the flight footage um, I didn't actually check that initially and I took off on the wrong channel and I got about oh, maybe 50 meters and lost the picture which means that I crashed and it's a great testimony to the strength of the frame I crashed several times with this today and the frame wasn't damaged at all didn't even break a prop because another time this, this does has no battery telemetry, I haven't put any battery telemetry on here so I was flying the HI, or the high voltage battery and I flew it to exhaustion and basically in the blink of an eye I lost power, I lost video and it just fell from the sky that was great, no problem, wasn't broken, no damage so yeah, all in all it's a pretty tough frame which is great and it seems to fly reasonably well, it'll fly even better when I get the PID sorted so what I'm going to do now is show you some of the DVR footage I took today some of the good flights and some of the not so good stuff and you'll see it is a little bit loose and I'm also really rough my flying I've had no practice because of the rules and regulations here I mean that I can't go out and fly in the evenings at the parks or anything and if I'm at the airport I can only fly with a spotter and an observer and there's no real challenge here because this it's just flat land all we've got is a bit of a horse race to fly down that gets pretty boring pretty damn quick so yeah no trees or anything to practice my skills so I'm really not really up to speed I need to do more mini quad flying but here you go if a bad person flies like this well you know good people could probably do a hell of a lot better with this thing so I have to say yeah it's not a bad little frame just to summarize the bad points are there's not enough room in here in fact just to make that point very clearly uh, this is a picture from the quadcopter 101 channel and look where it's got the receiver mounted on this particular frame on the lightning 210 this is a ready to fly one they got from direct from Foxtech FPV sent it to them for review and Foxtech themselves have mounted the receiver on the Mobius platform because there's no room inside the frame with a box frame they've made the top plates and bottom plates too close together so all I could fit in there was the receiver I couldn't fit the FPV transmitter in there and even Foxtech themselves had to mount the receiver in the worst possible place, place right up front where it's going to get smashed in the first crash so yeah they need to do some more work they need to think some of this stuff through and uh, 
Also, those pins on the nose controller, they shouldn't be on there. They should supply it without the pins, and people can add them if they want to, or they can do the fly lead thing like I've done there on this one. Apart from that, motors are good. ESC seem to work really, really well. I was surprised at how well the camera worked because when I tried it in the studio here, it actually looked pretty crap. But out there in real world conditions, it seemed to work more than adequately, certainly better than some of the CMOS cameras I've used in the past. So, yep, all in all, um, I think they're about 220 bucks. And when you compare it to what you used to get a year ago for 220 bucks, it's not such a bad deal, really. So, yep, I'm saying this product is good. I like it, apart from the reservations in respect to some of the design issues that they could have done much better but hey once you get it going it flies nice now if you've got questions comments anything to say put them in the relevant part of this page on the youtube channel and now i'll give you all the flight video that i mustered up and it's probably boring as hell but hey something to do there you go thanks for watching bye for now